Back from Engadget, and we are here at Lockheed Martin's Flight Demonstration Center in Virginia, just outside of DC, with Gary. He's going to show us the F 35 cockpit. Okay, you have a flat panel display uh, that's part of every cockpit, and it is to allow the pilot to essentially design the cockpit for the phase of the mission he is in. Each one of these main portals has an identical menu, so the pilot can select whatever he wants for whatever display he wants as he's flying. They operate in combinations of three, so these sub-portals, when I touch the center, become the main portal. So these three operate together. Uh, the main display is the tactical situation display, so I want to make that a little bigger. So I hit the arrow to hide the sub-portals, hit the other arrow, and I can hide the main portal and the other sub-portals. Uh, here's the store's management display. I don't want to have to keep switching back and forth between my main tactical situation display and that store's management. So I'm going to take an unused portal, make it the main display, select my menu, hit store's management, and I just moved it from the sub-portal there over here. So that's an example of how the pilot can design the, the cockpit. Our main display, which makes this fifth generation, is that left-hand display, tactical situation display. The little triangles are surface air missile sites. These two white squares are enemy airplanes. That odd symbol is an airfield, and there are pages of symbols and colors for the pilot to learn. This is a fairly simple uh, scenario. So. The key to that is we have air-to-air -air and air-to-ground targets on one display all the time. Where is that information coming from? As a pilot, I don't care. It can be coming from my radar, my wingman's radar, anybody who can contribute information that goes through my uh, computer, scenario computer, will be put up on that display. And then I'm going to use my, you go ahead and use it, the cursor slew controller, and you're operating your cursors, put it down on one of these fighters. And that blue airplane in the center is you. Put it down here on one of these guys. There's my target data box telling me everything the airplane knows about that one fighter. I'm going to use my target designation switch and make that guy a target. You notice it is a dashed red line around him because we don't currently have a weapon selected. So I'll take this top button, give it a quick click forward, and we've just selected the AMRAM missile over here on the store's management display. So now we have a solid red line. So that guy is now a target, and it is indicated also the weapon information on my head-up display. So that target is 21.5 miles away. We're closing at 120 knots. And if you look at this display here again, I'll zoom in on that guy, and you notice he is flying away from me. The other target is flying towards me because I see the pointy end of the nose and the radar dish on the front of the airplane. So it's intuitive just by looking at the display as to what's being portrayed. I don't have to do much interpretation in my mind. I'm going to go back to the main display and zoom back out. Now use your cursor slew controller again right here and let's move it up to that odd looking symbol. It locked onto that air to ground target. I'm going to zoom in and actually that tiny little circle is the airfield. So go ahead and put your cursors on the airfield. I'll use my target designate switch, make that, that button, make that an area of interest. Now I'm going to use my radar to do a synthetic aperture map of that airfield. So my radar is right now acquiring data, and then the computer will process that data, and it will then do a uh, put the SAR image of the airfield on that display. And I'm now going to highlight that display, and I am going to make that center of the airfield a target. So I am targeting an air-to-ground while still maintaining air-to-air -air situational awareness. That's key. So now I'm going to hit go. That's only in the simulator. We're flying. <laughs> And we are currently in air-to-air -air looking at that target, but we want to select air-to-ground weapon. Notice we now have the airfield targeted. That triangle is now solid. The red circle around the aircraft is now a dashed line, so we're in the air-to-ground mode. But notice we didn't lose any information on our tactical situation display. We can continue to have full situational awareness in the air-to-air -air regime, even though we're prosecuting an air-to-ground target. I'm going to fly towards that 
airfield right now towards the air-to-ground target. Flying by the air-to-air -air targets because they don't know I'm here because I'm stealthy. We're currently supersonic, Mach 1.06. We're 28 miles away from that target. My air-to-ground weapon information was on the left-hand side of my helmet-mounted display. This green information would normally be on a head-up display on a piece of glass on the glare shield. It's now on the pilot's visor. So even if he looks off-center, he maintains a lot of this information. So, and as we're closing in on that air-to-ground target, we still keep track of those air-to-air -air targets. We also keep track of these air-to-air -air missile sites. We know through our threat warning display that nobody has us locked up. They can't see us. If we're a fourth-generation aircraft, they're already engaging us with their surface-to-air missile sites. Now I can also refine my targeting on this synthetic aperture display and actually target, say, the control tower there. And then I would transition to my FLIR display, forward-looking infrared, so I would be able to real-time change my target as well. And I see real-time what's happening in the infrared spectrum on that display. And still accelerating Mach 1.1, we're at 30,000 feet, and we are 14 miles away from the target. And we'll see this carrot start to walk down. As we get closer, we're still out of range. Here comes the carrot. We're 12 miles from the target. And that's the max range of the weapon, 11.5 miles at Mach 1.13, 30,000 feet. We can throw that bomb a long way. And here in a second, and I'm going to go up and show the stores management system. And we are now in zone, so we can drop the weapon. I press the red weapon release, and the weapon bay door opens. Bomb ejects. I'll go ahead and drop the second bomb. Weapon bay door open, bomb ejects. And now I'm going to turn away from that target because the weapons are released. And I want to turn back towards those two fighters. But we're keeping track of the air to ground target on our FLIR. And actually, I'm going to put it up on my distributor aperture system over here in the air-to-surface view. So I'm looking at the airfield on two with two infrared sensors right now. And as soon as those bombs hit, then I will go ahead and go after the two air-to-air -air targets. And the bomb just detonated, and we see it on both infrared displays. So I'm going to go back to air-to-air. -air. Selected. I'll go back to stores management. I have the air-to-air -air selected. And I am back on this display. I'll use my cursor slew controller to lock up that target. He is in range, so I'm going to shoot him. Here goes my air-to-air -air missile eject from the weapons bay and shoot at the that target and on my infrared. I have I have that fighter off to the right, and I'm going to turn towards him now, and there he is in that square, bottom of the display. And there he is, after my air-to-air -air missile got him. All right, and now we're going to take a look at the F-35 helmet. Hi, this is the uh, F-35 helmet made by uh, BSI. It's uh, a critical piece of equipment in the F-35 because uh, all of the pilot's flight information is displayed on the inside of his visor. Uh, previously, aircraft have had a head-up display, uh, which is a piece of glass about uh, four by six inches in front of them. But in the F-35, all the information is displayed on the inside of the pilot's visor. So uh, he wears a helmet, which is individually fit to him, and also he uh, 
there's some cases at night time, especially we can put the picture of the, uh, from the distributed aperture sensors on the inside of the visor so he doesn't need to wear night vision goggles. And uh, that allows the pilot to be able to move his head around. See, I'm looking down and uh, seeing the outside world just uh, as it appears, uh, without, it's like looking through the bottom of the airplane. Or being able to turn, turn around, to see the uh, sensor view, the outside world, even at night, since it's an infrared image. So daytime or nighttime, it uh, it's pretty much the same picture. And it go now. Keep your finger on that button when you slow. How does it feel? Can you imagine wearing this for uh, in 12 hours at a time? It's uh, it's very comfortable. The guys that the guys that fly with it say it's uh, it, uh, it's a very comfortable helmet. Uh, previous helmets uh, have weighed about the same, but this one has a lot better balance to it. So the guys, uh, again, the pilots have flown it, say it's just extremely comfortable, and they uh, they really don't want to fly it anymore without it because uh, it's so easy to get used to and to fly.